<laughs> it's just a video I'm not used to. Right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to uh, the Clavio Design Podcast. My name is Guy. I'm a designer working in the uh, deliverability team here at Clavio, and today we have a very special episode, as you can see, or not see, if you're listening to the audio. Uh, we have a video version, and we're all remote, so fun. And uh, I guess we're going to go around the virtual room and introduce ourselves. Yeah, uh, we are. <laughs> <laughs> Some order that makes sense. I guess sense. I'll start. I guess. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Sarah, and I'm a product designer on the content team here at Clavio. Cool. Hey, everyone. I'm Don. You can all put a face to our names now. I'm on the Flows team, by the way. <laughs> and my name is Griffin. Uh, data science team and this is my first podcast ever <gasps> yeah pretty crazy <laughs> welcome welcome um well so the reason that we're doing this remote as you may well uh, probably know <laughs> uh, we can't be in the same room right now uh due to all that's going on in the world with uh health crisis but we are here doing our best to talk a little bit about uh, how working from home has been and how we change some of our processes to address this uh, very particular scenario. So I guess the first question uh, is how has been your work from home experience so far? Don? <laughs> sure. Um, yeah, so I guess going into work from home, I thought it was going to be a pretty neat experience. Like, unlike anything else I've ever done before, other people are going through it too. I was like, yeah, I'm ready. Like, this should be fun. Um, however, the first few weeks were rough. <laughs> I had no motivation and didn't feel compelled to do anything. I think once we all started understanding that 100% productivity wasn't expected, um, and I started getting more into the groove of things, figuring out what works and what didn't. I think that's when like things started to shift. Um, now I have my work from home experience or work from home routine nailed down. And I pretty much forgot what office life was like. <laughs> yeah, I'd say that it definitely has its ups and downs. Um, similarly to Don, I it was a difficult adjustment for me. I'm not used to this life of like doing everything in the same room especially like my office is in my bedroom so there's like no separation between work and life which is kind of weird but as time has gone on I've definitely gotten more used to it and have been able to be more productive and feel more normal than I did in the beginning um I still miss the office though I miss seeing everyone's faces in real life like grabbing lunch chatting <laughs> in the middle of doing work as opposed to like, I don't know, staring at my computer on Zoom all day, but it could certainly be worse. <laughs> For sure. Um, yeah, well, starting at a company remote is definitely an interesting experience, which um, I could definitely touch on a little bit more in a bit, but um, it's strange, you know, being on a call with these three other people right now and I've met them maybe for like 20 minutes at a time <laughs> um, ever during the interview process. So it's been pretty strange, but um, I've come from remote work, so I'm sort of used to it. And I'm now I'm pretty convinced that the universe just doesn't really want me to ever work in an office. <laughs> so I'm just used to it. And, um, but no, I'm super excited to get back to the office when that time does come because that's a big reason why I joined Clavio. <laughs> um. Yeah, I'd say, I mean, similar to Don, I think we all had this idea that, oh, I'm going to, you know, have the time to do, you know, all my projects and like personal projects or things that were, uh, you know, in your backlog, so to say. <laughs> and then the truth is that everything is much more exhausting. Like sometimes things that would be so simple end up being such a chore. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think it takes a little while to get used to it, but then... I think uh, you find a little your own way of handling it, I guess. Just making sure that you don't go crazy, make sure that you go out, you know, 
with all the proper guidelines and stuff like that but still like see the sun <laughs> uh, i also come from a remote work i, I work remotely for two years uh in brazil before moving to the united states so uh it has a little bit of a deja vu um but i think it, it is different because you know now weekends come and usually that's when you get out of the house now you stay in the house <laughs> so i think that's the 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 best the the biggest challenge for me cool key quick question hmm. do you find it better now that you're working remote with everyone else working remote um is that better than last time when you were in brazil and you were the only one working remote yeah i think it's definitely better because there's this whole you know idea of if you if you have one people remote and everyone else is in the room it's very hard for everyone else to be aware that you have to you know sometimes repeat questions make sure that you know there is a mic for everyone speaking and things like that so i feel like it it sort of make makes sure that we have those practices in in place um so i yeah i think definitely more efficient than just one person remote or the vast majority of people being local um but i think I don't know you also have to take into account and for some for a lot of people that was their first time being remote so there's like this learning curve and you know so it's not necessarily immediately more productive or more efficient <laughs> so yeah um cool i guess um has your i mean we we, talk, we touch a little bit on this but you do you feel like your level of productivity has changed in the last couple of weeks slash months. <laughs> Don. I can start just by saying that oh. <laughs> starting this way is it's obviously been level because I haven't had the experience in the office, but um, I'd say it's just, it's just been a, it's been sort of a strange experience, not like meeting people face to face, not having, you know, the opportunity to just walk over to someone. Um, especially when you're learning a product, learning a whole new system of um, like a whole new design system and, you know, actually trying to learn more about people. Um, so it's been like a really exciting experience on one hand, because I'm learning all these new things, but then it's also really tiring and difficult on the other hand, because you can't just walk up and talk to someone face to face and ask that question. It just takes a lot more effort. Um, so the productivity has probably been a little bit lower than you know, what I anticipated starting at a new job would be like. Yeah, for me, coming from the office, definitely a lot less product productive at home. But over these past couple of weeks, I've, I've gotten more productive. Um, like finding a space inside your apartment where you can just work and not have to focus on anything else is pretty nice. So that's what I have here. We have a little desk in this little hallway where I'm facing a wall and there's a wall behind me, so I can't really do anything else. So I guess trying to force myself to be productive has been helpful. Yeah, I, I definitely feel less productive than I was in the office. I feel like I tend to like draw on the energy around me. So like when I'm in the office and everyone around me is being like working hard, I feel more motivated to also work hard. Whereas when I'm at home by myself, it's like, it's just a lot easier to get distracted by little things and like go off the rails a little bit. Um, it's definitely reduced at, over time now that we've been in quarantine for like two plus months. Um, but there's still days when I just like can't stare at my computer for longer than like 30 minutes and everything else seems really exciting and uh, grabs my attention. <laughs> so <laughs> take it day by day. <laughs> yeah, I definitely try to find excuses to not do work more often than I did before. <laughs> yeah, I feel like in the past, like when that happens, you just go, you know, take a trip, you know, walk around the, the office, go to the kitchen, get a snack. Like I am working right next to the kitchen here. So like going to, to get a snack is literally like 10 seconds. <laughs> so there's not a lot of opportunities to just like let, sometimes for ideas to, they need some space to mature and like, you know, uh you can't find that i mean i feel like i should take more walks i guess with the mask and all but um yeah I, I feel like it's definitely i had that feeling at the end of the day most of the times 
even though when I do things, it feels like it's, I haven't done it. <laughs> it feels like, oh, today, like, you know, wasn't a productive day. But if you look, I mean, if you sometimes put into paper, like, oh yeah, I did that and that and this. It's just that it feels like because you're not interacting with people, that exchange doesn't get into your brain uh, in the same way, I feel like. I don't know. It just, it's a weird feeling at the end of the day. But usually when I go to the end of the week, I'm like, oh yeah, this happened and that happened. So I guess... That was good. <laughs> um, yeah, but at the same time, I think the world understands that we don't need to be super productive right now. Like we're all dealing yeah. with this mm -hmm. in our own ways. Um, I think expectations have definitely changed. Yeah, I feel like it's if you're if you're feeling okay at this point in time, <laughs> you're already doing great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we're all just doing our best. <laughs> and speaking of, uh, you know, trying to adapt to these times, here at Clavio, we are trying to do digital happy hours. So uh, at the end of every week, we have this lovely system that actually Dawn helped uh, or uh, is currently working on. I don't know. Is that finished? The happy hour project? I think that's done. <laughs> Okay, um, so basically we create these rooms and then people can hang out. Uh, we're trying to, as a design team as well, um, change some of our processes to be more uh, efficient remotely. Um, so what are your experiences with these? Like, uh, where do you think is the right size? Um, or do you even like doing that? <laughs> I like it. <laughs> um <laughs> I feel like during the day when you would fill some of your time with being social, um, now whenever you have interactions with people, it's, you know, over Slack or even in a Zoom call, but you're always talking about work. Um, I feel, I find myself only, you know, reaching out when I have a question about, you know, something I'm actually working on. And that's sort of just a space at the end of the day for an hour where I know, you know, I'll have a little bit of social time, being able to talk to people who aren't, you know, talk about life with people who aren't living in the same house or same apartment as me. Um, it's nice to have, you know, that experience at the end of the day, just to not really have to think about work um, and just be a little bit more social than you would be. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I think it's a good way to like stay connected uh, just because the dynamic in the office is so much different and we do get more like social time and like just chatting about non-work related things. So the happy hours, you know, keep us all like staying friends and stuff, but it is hard when there's too many people. Definitely. I feel like anything more than like five people, it turns into like, I don't know when to talk. Like, I don't want to interrupt somebody. I don't know if someone else is about to say something. And then it's like, it can get hard when there's too many, too many cooks in the kitchen, I guess. I don't know. It's, it's so much yeah. harder to communicate because only one person can talk at a time. You can't like naturally split off into different conversations. So I feel like the, the rooms have to stay pretty small in order for it to feel, I don't know, fun and not stressful. <laughs> I think that's the hardest part about working remote, figuring out when your turn to speak on a Zoom call is. It's so hard with timing, like you don't want to talk over anyone else. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of awkward. I feel like it's no. already hard here in this podcast, this remote podcast. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, especially with like lags and stuff. Sometimes like, I don't know if someone is currently talking when I'm trying to start because there's like a delay and it's like, I'm sorry. <laughs> Have you found um, people? Been... Like... Oh. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> go ahead, Griffin. Uh, just like understanding of like, having these happy hours it's great to get everyone together and stuff but have you found that people are understanding to like maybe you don't want to sit in front of a computer at the end of the day or at the end of the week i'm um, talking to people like people are do you find that people are understanding of you just not going to those even though it is like a social thing I mean, yeah I feel sure like... that's why <laughs> that's why our happy hours are like optional not everyone shows up even like to this design podcast like if people want their own time, they can have it. Like, come if you want. Um, but I think they're pretty fun. Yeah, I mean, it's it's hard to know what's going on in people's lives right now. Like, you know, they might be leaving, you know, work early to go to the, the grocery store and try to, you know, 
get ahead of the crowd or something like that. So I feel like it's it's um, got to give people some slack. Um, how do you guys avoid like this uh, the awkwardness that comes with these? <laughs> Uh, you know, awkward silences, long pauses, um, how to get started, who speaks. <laughs> I feel like right now we're trying to figure it out. <laughs> who speaks every time I ask a question? <laughs> so how do you guys handle it? <laughs> I like that. So I know Don has been like organizing all the activities and stuff for our happy hours. I feel like it's, or icebreakers or whatever. I feel like it's nice to like start off with something like that. So that way we all are kind of doing something together and maybe like trying to reach some goal so that everyone's kind of on the same page and we're not all just like staring at each other like I don't know what to do it's like there is something for everyone to do and then I feel like after that conversation kind of flows more naturally yeah I guess to help with the who talked first and who talks next next thing I like to go with the popcorn method um so like you call on someone else like popcorn griffin you know <laughs> oh it's my turn to talk then. all right uh, um yeah I, I think it's just providing a little bit of structure to it like having an agenda or like if you know something's going to start like a certain way you it's really hard for me to get into a call and really have no idea what is going to be discussed or anything like that so you can sort of come prepared um with sort of your points or your um what the general topic of something even is um is really beneficial to keeping a conversation flowing. Yeah, and Zoom emojis. <laughs> <laughs> I wish they were more like visible or like they gave, I don't know. I feel like Slack had those uh, for their video calls and they pop up like in a nicer way. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I feel like- Yeah, there should be more. Um. I feel like, you know, having the icebreakers, activities, the clear roadmap for any meeting so that people don't get distracted. Um, I think the n natural tendencies when you're working remotely or doing remote meetings is that there's so many things going on. You can have another window with something interesting. Uh, so it's it's hard to get everyone's attention, like undivided, right? They're also in their house. There might be, you know, the someone at the door or they get a notification for a package or all sorts of things that could happen. So I feel like, yeah, trying to be, uh, you know, understanding of people's times and, and how their attention might, you know, fluctuate usually. It's a good uh, strategy. Um, so you, Griffin, you talked about um, how, you know, you, you not a lot of people want to, they work all day in front of a screen and at the end of the day, they have to socialize through a screen and they have to be entertained through a screen. Uh, mm -hmm. How do you guys feel like this, your work and life balance, like has, do you guys try to get out of the computer as soon as possible? Like after 5 p.m. I'm done. <laughs> or, you know, you think it's just natural. I'm gonna just close this tab here and <laughs> see something else. It's really hard to strike that balance and not have it blend, I found. Um, you know, sometimes I'm sitting at a computer working and I'm like, oh, all right, I'm done. And then I just end up sitting on the computer, you know, doing something else for a little bit of time. And it really just feels like it's the same thing after, you know, you actually step away from the computer. So I found myself having to like really set a boundary. Like when I'm done with work, I'm going to step away from the computer, go outside, do something else, <laughs> talk to some people face to face, you know, who I live with and like having like a hard end to the day is so important. And just like letting people know, like, I'm going to be offline the rest of the night we can continue this tomorrow morning or something like that. People tend to be pretty understanding about that. Yeah, I definitely try to like have something that I need to do after I'm like done working so that I don't just like stay on the computer, even if it's just like, just keep staring at my screen doing something else. So like usually at like five, 5.15, like whatever time I'm gonna stop, I either go for a walk or I start cooking dinner. And so that way there's like something else I'm doing. Like I can't be in front of my screen like give my eyes a little break. And I think that helps is just like having something you need to get done right after you finish so that you don't just like get drawn back in. Yeah, for a lot of us, that thing that we have to get done is to play Animal Crossing. So it's just hopping from one screen to another. 
Yeah, I, I I had that problem, I think, when I was working remotely from Brazil because my office space was also my bedroom. So it was like done with work here in this computer and I'm just going to go to the TV <laughs> in the same like <laughs> little space, right? So, yeah, I feel like, you know, when we were working in an office, like the, the process of the commuting, right, is, is the mental, like you just, okay, I'm going through this, like I have to do this and that's this is the official separation like once I'm in the train once I'm in the bike <laughs> like all work is left at work and then when I get home you know I don't think about it or at least ideally don't think about it so yeah I think having something to do on your calendar either like you go out for an exercise or um, you do something else helps your mind set those different uh, like zones so to speak I, I saw a tweet someone was saying that after work, they, they do, they had a Peloton and they do a biking session as almost as if that's their commute. So like mm -hmm. before going to work, they do some biking and then after work, they do some biking. So that way, like it still feels like you have those boundaries. Um, even like, I feel like to get started, like um, get your day going is tough because you don't have that, right? Like you don't have a commute, which in one hand is great because you can sleep more. <laughs> But on the other hand, you don't have that sort of boundary or like separation um so yeah um and it's difficult when there aren't as many options out there like for you to have that separation it just makes it even more difficult to do that yeah the only things you can do are things inside your house <laughs> right. um so how are you guys you know using your time or trying to unload you mentioned like Uh, having things on your calendar, like cooking, is it like uh, exercise? <laughs> Both. <laughs> yeah. yeah. A lot of cooking, a lot of trying new recipes, a lot of, I'm bored. Let me go to the fridge and see what I can like cook up right now. Um, also, also just like watching a ton of TV shows, binging a lot, working on my island. I don't know. I love that. <laughs> Yeah. So what is the thing that I guess the most surprising thing that you thought you wouldn't miss, but you do miss from the pre quarantine days? I'd say personally, uh. like when you, sorry, <laughs> when you're in a room, you can read people like, you know, the, there's so much communication that happens through, um, you know, body language or expression. And I feel like a lot of that is lost. That's why I feel like some meetings feel off is because you don't have that sort of feedback or that input. So sometimes you may, you know, give a speech or, or give a presentation and think that everyone didn't like it just because you couldn't read the room. <laughs> and I think even in yeah. Zoom, like if you put it in gallery mode, it's hard to see everyone like, you know, at the same, I don't know, there's something very different about it that just feels a little weird. Yeah. I miss like little walks between things. It's like, I miss walking from one meeting to the next, as opposed to just like closing out one Zoom window and then opening up another one. <laughs> I don't know. It's like, it's just a nice little like, okay, get a few steps in, like, I don't know, see what's going on in the office real quick. You just like get like a tiny little like two minute break in there as opposed to like meeting, another meeting, another meeting. And then it's like, you're just staring yeah. at your screen for so long and you never get to step away. So yeah, I miss yeah. that. Mine, mine's related to that. Mine is like walking to and from meetings with other people, like that little chit chat that happens in between meetings, like squeezing a little gossip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would echo all of that. Um, but I guess working remotely too before I was at Clavio was you know just like going outside afterwards. And this is sort of a really strange thing, but I found myself realizing it more and more as I've been, it's been nicer out, there's been more people out like walking around is like, I find myself, I'm a big like smiler at people. And just like, I don't have that human interaction anymore because people always have something over their mouth or like, it's even interaction with strangers that, you know, I find myself missing, which is really weird, but it's totally something that where we just communicate so much with our facial expressions and body language. And that's just something that's so weird. <laughs> Yeah, and that's true. Getting on like a crowded train. <laughs> I don't know if I missed that yet. <laughs> oh, I definitely don't miss that. <laughs> yeah, 
yeah i i don't i don't really know what that will feel like after this like <laughs> are gonna we gonna be very strange really weird i mean are we either gonna be either gonna be like very happy to be there or gonna be like freaked out <laughs> more like the latter <laughs> uh, a little bit of both <laughs> yeah i think something else it's, it's pretty weird seeing it on tv and in movies like, oh, yeah that's together. something that i notice all the time like um like whenever there's some new show or something like that and people are like in the streets and i'm like i the first thing that i think of is like when was this recorded yeah <laughs> like that's definitely <laughs> not from right now <laughs> can't relate anymore to people in crowds it's just like what are they doing like i can't remember what that's like <laughs> <laughs> they look so happy <laughs> It's all acting, but they look it looks so nice to do that, right? <laughs> uh, and I say one thing that I miss as a designer is that, you know, that spontaneous, like you said, like bumping into people in the corridor, but also like when you're walking around the office, you get to see people's screens and then see a little bit of what they're working. And then sometimes you can have, you know, you can have something, some sort of piece of feedback, or you can say, oh, I help, I worked on this in the past like you you know or give them some incentive or you know talk about how things are looking good and i feel like having miss i miss a little bit of that too because it's harder to know what everyone's working on sometimes i mean we just switched to figma uh, or are in the process of doing that which i think help a lot and i'm happy that we started this process before this because <laughs> i feel like that would be pretty crazy to do it all <laughs> during quarantine but uh, yeah, it's tough to know, like try to get everyone in the same page and make things cohesive and all that. Um, so on the flip side, uh, what do you guys think is working well in this new remote reality? It's a I think one. that this is showing Clavio that it's okay to be remote because Clavio <laughs> take. isn't... It, and it isn't exactly a remote first company, but now that everyone has to do it, I think they're going to be a lot more easygoing on the folks that decide to want to work remote, like for a while. Um, and it just has helped us develop this culture of remote first. So we understand what it's like for people who do work remotely, like, like from the beginning, like if you were in a room with a bunch of people and one person's working remote, um, we'll have a lot more empathy for that person. Yeah, I would totally agree with that. <laughs> I think it all comes down to empathy and just like understanding that people need to do, you know, different things. People have, you know, different lives that impact them in total, totally different ways in this new strange world we're living in. Um, and then another thing I would say is that it's okay to not always be super productive and everyone needs, you know, to take a step back every once in a while. Um, and I think that that's something that's just been heightened and people are becoming way more aware of in this remote world. Yeah. I think it's nice that we're like trying to maintain like some level of normalcy by keeping up with like the same rituals, I guess. So we still have like our weekly lunch and learns and our by the numbers presentations on Fridays and like, all the same design meetings and even though they're different it's still like the same mm -hmm. so i don't know you get a little a little taste of how things used to be and <laughs> still feel like you're connected with other people and like working for the same company i don't know even though you don't actually see anybody anymore you still yeah. have the same routines i guess i think that's good uh yeah like we have our weekly um by the numbers meeting which we go through a bunch of stats at the end of the week um we actually changed the time of that to be uh better aligned with london which some people were from london or other areas so we're trying to make sure that everyone's overlapping which i think is a pretty nice uh move um because it used to be the fact that they would record a video and we'll watch the video but now they can hop in at the same time uh and i think that brings everyone together um yeah like i said i think moving i think uh one thing that's working really well is moving to figma and doing all the collaboration through that tool and i think it really helps like sending a link to someone having them be on the artboard um 
I think that, I mean, it's a great time to do that switch, like I said. <laughs> um, yeah. So I guess when we return to normal, whatever the normal is, or the new normal, as they say, uh, what is the first thing that you would do? Assuming that all things are now possible <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm stuck between two. Uh, one of them is go to the gym. <laughs> I'm a huge, like, course. person. I go to the gym, like, four days a week. It's, like, part of my routine. And home workouts, just, like, they're not the same. Like, trying to do a normal workout with, like, two dumbbells in the middle of your living room is, like, really sad, honestly. So I'm, like, really, really excited to go back to the real gym. And the other one, of course, is to go to Veggie Galaxy. <laughs> of course. Is my favorite <laughs> restaurant, the best restaurant. They've been closed for all of quarantine, um, not even for like takeout, for like the safety of their workers, which is totally understandable and awesome. And I respect that. But I miss, I miss Veggie Galaxy a lot and I can't wait to go back. <laughs> Can you give some insight to our listeners of what Veggie Galaxy is? Yeah, so Veggie Galaxy <laughs> is a restaurant in Cambridge, and it is like all vegetarian and vegan diner food. Uh, so there's like a ton of like really delicious vegan junk food, basically. Uh, so they've got like your burgers, your sandwiches, like bakery goods. It's amazing. If you're in the Boston area and you haven't been, I would definitely recommend. <laughs> it's really good. For me, um, I'm actually supposed to be on a vacation right now, but that had to be scrapped. Um, so I really going? just want to, I'm supposed to go over, I'm supposed to be in Amsterdam right now. Uh. Yeah. So first thing I want to do is leave, <laughs> not work. <laughs> um, just like fly somewhere nice and just chill. Maybe meet people, talk to people, you know, go out to eat. Strangers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, strangers. <laughs> yeah, I'd have to say travel too. Uh, that's top, top of my list. Um, I was on a very, very brief trip <laughs> and then had to fly home due to all of this. So first thing I'm going to do is get a plane ticket and go somewhere without having to worry about... <laughs> the trip getting canceled. So that's, yeah. that's mine. Um, I'd say, I mean, I, I'm a avid concert goer <laughs> and those are all gone for obvious reasons. Uh, and I don't know when they would be back, but I, I know that there are some concerts that I already had tickets for that are, you know, now in limbo. So uh, I would love to see my favorite artists live again. <laughs> I mean, I feel like a lot of artists are finding a way to like do it remotely or like having like these sessions, but it's just not the same. I, I actually, uh, I saw this, people are trying to have parties on Zoom too, where like they, there's a DJ <laughs> and then each person dances in their own like house. And then they, there's a director apparently or someone that's controlling where the focus is. So they go around. It's like, it reminds me a lot of like, you know, uh, sports when they put a camera on someone in the audience and they're like, oh, I'm in, <laughs> you know, I'm yeah. being like, you know, everyone's looking what I'm doing. And I feel like that's the same thing. It's so funny. But yeah, I miss concerts. So who knows? And also traveling. But yeah, I was going to plan a trip, but then it didn't happen. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we'll wait. Indefinitely. <laughs> yeah. I mean... <laughs> Oh, <laughs> in time trying to be hopeful here i think you know soon <laughs> but yeah all right so i guess with any clavio design podcast episode we end it with recommendations so um i guess don you are in first here on the doc sure so my recommendation has to do with helping teams and I guess like groups of friends just connect over Zoom or Skype or whatever. Um, so first one is a series of Figma board games. Um, there's Figmaable, which is like Figma Scrabble, and then there's Catan and Monopoly. Um, basically, 
just board games on Figma that let, that let you move around the game board and play. I don't know how, I don't know how well these games actually work because in theory, um, like a lot of this could be automated by other gaming sites or whatever, but I like, I like the novelty of it. I think it's pretty cool. Like something super retro, something super modern. Um, and yeah, and my second one, another site that um, we've been using here with our icebreakers and games is Sporkle. Um, it's this website with a ton of different quizzes that you can take with your friends, just random quizzes. Last week or two weeks ago, we did um, the countries of the world. So like we had to go around and name all the countries in the world um, and it lets you compete with other people. So pretty cool, pretty interactive. Yeah, we'll have, we'll have those links. Cool. Griffin, awesome. do you have anything? I do, yeah. Uh, totally going to steal something from the company-wide meeting yesterday, but um, Clavio's book policy, I had like five books in an Amazon shopping cart. Um, and then yesterday in that call, they someone was talking about bookshop.org. Um, and I checked it out and I'm going to place an order for books uh, this evening, but pretty much it's an online bookstore with um, this mission to support local and independent bookshop uh, bookshops. So going to use that and not buy books on Amazon. And it really didn't well, seem, you know, too much more expensive at all, which I was actually really surprised to see, which is nice. Nice. Um, so my recommendation is this YouTube show that's been quite popular. It's called Some Good News. It's hosted by John Krasinski, which um, used to do gym on The Office. He also has a new Amazon show. Uh, I think it's just um, at times like these where, you know, it's hard to see good news. It's, it's, you know, it makes you feel good that there are some things going on that are positive or how, you know, humanity finds a way to persevere and like show its warmth <laughs> through these trying times. I think it's a very wholesome, like one of the most wholesome pieces of content that there is in the internet right now. And uh, it's so popular that a lot of celebrities are now doing cameos. And I, I think... And overall, I saw some article about like how this whole thing really lets you see celebrities in a different way because they are also going like people, are, everyone's going through this. Right. And you can see their houses and like there was like Meryl Streep was singing the other day or something like that. So it's like it's really an interesting time that I don't I wouldn't say it equal equalizes it because, you know, everyone has it's it's you know, not everyone can work from home or can have access to all the things. But. I think it, it certainly uh, allows you to see things from a different perspective. So I really, uh, I think this is something that's fairly unique and wouldn't happen otherwise. And not that I'm grateful for anything that's going on right now, but <laughs> uh, yeah. It's some good news. Some good news. <laughs> yes. Did I, I didn't say it. Okay. There would be a link. <laughs> that was a pun. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Um, so my recommendation is I know that a lot of people are uh, beautifying their homes, doing lots of decorating. I personally am a fan of doing that in the form of plants. Um, so there is a local plant store in Boston and Cambridge called Niche Plant Shop, and they just started doing online orders. So they're like shipping across the U.S. and also doing like local doorstep deliveries in Boston and Cambridge. So if you're in the market for some plants and you're shopping at this time, uh, I think it's important to like support our small businesses when they can't be open for normal business. So niche plant shop, super cute. They have a lot of fun plants and they're affordable. So check it out. All right. Um, also, I'd say Animal Crossing if anyone's not playing. <laughs> <laughs> if you can get Sorry, Griffin. In the <laughs> biggest spokesperson for that game. <laughs> Yeah, um, I've been playing less but than when it first launched, but uh, it's still like a source of joy. Uh, and it helps you, you know, just clear out your mind. Um, yeah. All right. So I guess that's it for this first remote edition of the Clavio Design Podcast. We are recording a video, which I, who knows if it's actually recording. It tells me here that it is, but... If <laughs> If everything goes well, I feel like we should do, we are going to do something with it, maybe post it somewhere uh, just to make it even more uh, approachable. And uh, um, yeah, 
All right, everyone. I'll we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>